Hey guys, welcome to the shop. We should probably start off where we left off in last week's video. And if you didn't watch it, we cut out the rusty, crusty rocker and the floor. We replaced the whole floor on this side in this truck last week. And now it's time to start putting this thing back together. There's a lot still left to do, even though we are making progress. It's not, uh, we're not done yet. So let's continue and see if we can't get this rocker at least welded in at a minimum. So now that I've got my replacement floor pan all welded in, it's still far from done. There's a lot of prep work that goes along with this stuff as well. We need to seal up the gaps that we've created by cutting out the old floor and overlapping it with our new panel. We've also got exposed metal where we had to weld this thing, and that would not last if we didn't do something to seal it up from, from the weather, right? It's, gonna, it's in a pretty uh, exposed area from our wheels here. So, what we're going to do is use a painfully, painfully, painfully expensive seam sealer. I don't know why that stuff's so expensive. So anywhere that i got a gap that I don't want water to get into, I'm using... This is Dynatron, made by 3M, seam sealer. I mean, you can get it far more expensive than this stuff, but I think it's $18 a tube. Correct me if I'm wrong. So I'm not the best at applying this stuff. So I've got you up under the truck here, and the benefit to watching this on video is that you don't have to get your teeth and hair completely full of rust and dirt. What we're doing is seam sealing this joint here. You can see the original floor and then our patch panel right here that we've tied in. And the original floor overlaps our patch panel. And we don't want dirt and grit getting in that seam because it wouldn't last. And we've just spot welded it on the bottom side. Now it is fully welded, seam welded up top. But this is all it needs at the bottom. But to seal it up, we've cleaned the metal around uh, our joint there. And we're just going to seam seal it up. That's, uh, that's all you do. Now once this is once this is dry, we'll paint this and then probably you know do an undercoating under the truck and you will never see this. Just protect that metal joint. Little bit of air tool love. Definitely makes a difference when you oil your air tools. Don't oil your paint gun. But your grinders and stuff, you know, they do they do pretty good with a little bit of oil. So I didn't show me fitting the front of the rocker here, but I will show just a little of me fitting the back, just so you know. It's kind of a tedious and drawn out process, it is for me anyway. I do want to show you this light though. I picked this up from Harbor Freight. Just a pole light that, uh, or a, I don't know, a strip LED light. Really nice. Takes the uh, 18650 batteries. So if you got an old laptop or an old power tool or something that still has some good batteries in it, you can pull those out and then have a whole stable full of charged batteries ready to go for this thing. It's adjustable, high, low, and it's got the old end light for getting down into thin, small areas. I like that. I picked that up. I've seen some other guys on the, on the tubes using it, and I figured I'd pick me one up. They're magnetic, so, you know, pretty handy. I do say so myself. Let's see if we can't get this rocker fit. So let me give you the rundown on how I fit these rockers. Now, there may be better ways. There may be faster ways. This is just the way that I do it, and it, and it works. So I got it fit up front, and I did the front the same way that I'll show you doing the back here. There's no magic to it. It just takes a little bit of time. Now, I left the cab corner in place because you do have to take into consideration the order in which these panels were put on originally. So, 
cab corner is last on these, so you got to get your rocker on first. Now I like to leave the cab corner if there's any left. Leave it, that way it's a good reference so I can get this rocker down to the proper height. Because I have seen these put in, kicked up a little bit, and it does not take much for that door. Especially if you get a little bit of wear in the hinges to start rubbing on these rockers if they've been put in at an angle. So you really want to make sure to get these things down where they're supposed to be. In fact, maybe a little lower is better than high. So behind our original metal here goes down quite a bit. So we need to trim this a little bit. We'll take it and fit it again. We'll trim a little bit if we need to, fit it. You get the idea, back and forth until we get the end of this metal button up to the end of this metal at the proper height. That way we can just seam weld this and it'll leave us a really nice, uh, really nice joint there that we can easily do the body work on. That's the idea. So I'm going to mark this where I think it needs to be cut close and uh, start cutting on it. So I've got my rocker all marked out and I'm about ready to cut it. I'm going to cut it on top of that line. Give me a little extra metal there, just a bit. That way I can come back with a little hand sander and make me a really nice butt joint here. That way they line up really good and put this rocker exactly where I want it. Now I know when a lot of people replace these, they will not replace the inner rocker. Sometimes the rod had gone and they did, the person that put them in didn't even know they had an inner rocker. Didn't know it was such a thing because <laughs> they rusted that bad. But I suggest that if you do one of these ever, which you probably won't, but if you did, Put the inner rocker in because it adds a lot of stability to this rocker. It caps the back and turns this into more of a tube than just a piece of thin sheet metal and gives it a lot of support. If you run upon a log or if somebody puts a jack under here and this inner rocker is not in here boxing your rocker in, well it's just going to crush and then there you go. And they get, they're kind of flimsy without these uh, inner rockers so leave them in or replace them if, uh, if you happen to do one of these. So when you do a body job like this, it helps to have multiple grinders. And I've got one, two, three, four, five hooked up. Every one that I have actually at the moment, each one with a different type of wheel on it. But the problem is that they get quite tangled. You can do it with one grinder, but you sure do swap a lot of grinding wheels. So after a couple trips on and off, I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. Actually, really close, really close. Got a little lip there we're going to have to bend in. These never fit exactly perfect. And, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to see up there that they're not the exact mold that uh, these original rockers were made from. But you get the idea. They fit good enough. And once you do the body work, you can't tell it anyway, as long as it's a pretty close fit. So we need to bend that in a bit. And then we can just lightly tack this in, hang the door, Make sure that it fits, and then you know, start welding it in. I still got to punch all the holes and all the other good stuff. Yeah. So you may not think an old 2 before and a cheap jack are body tools, but trust me, they are. Okay, love, what I need you to do is come around on the inside here. I'm going to hold this door up, and I want you... you... Want me to get in there? Yeah, you can just go around that way. I'm going to pick this door up. Well, i got to take this wire off first, and I want you, if you would, you're going to have to be in there, too. Should I go in there? No, nope, nope. uh, you can just walk right here, and I'm going to pick this door up, hopefully, and... Nope. <laughs> break yeah, I won't. <laughs> and uh, I just want you to start these top two bolts, or at least okay. just one. Yep, you can see hopefully where it's going to go. Right, these two, okay. and this top one. So you just tell me which way to go. Oh, and I will. These are pretty heavy. Uh, and oh, no. Whoa. Go out. Like 
turn the door that at that point. You can move those hinges. You can ask come down. Down now. More out that way. Down a little. More out. I can't move them. Okay, that's fine. So I'm telling you to go out God a little more. Um, I mean, if it's in there at all, it'll hold it. Thank you, love. That was much appreciated. I was going to try that by myself. I'm glad I didn't. I can get the rest of it. How about some coffee? I don't have a million dollars. So check that out. Sent to me by a viewer. I didn't have one of these. Actually, they sent me the 3 8 drive and the quarter inch drive. These are AC Delco, 12 volt battery. Pretty neat, haven't used them so far. Haven't turned one bolt with them. I did charge the batteries and I'm interested to see how they actually perform. So that was very nice of you, whoever you were, to send me these. So I got the door hung there. Let's close it and see how she looks. Not bad, not bad. I just went off the original scratch marks that I put in the door uh, when I took it off. So the line looks pretty good actually. It could be in just a little, the door, and I may need to move that striker out just a scooch uh, because it is feeling like it may be in. Thank you. It may feel like, it feels like it may be in just a little bit, but our body line seems to be pretty good with the body line that's in the cab here. Um, you cannot go by these pinstripes. I know probably that's what you're looking at, but it's only got the top line on the cab here and it's missing the top line on the rest of the, well, it starts there. So the crease in the cab looks good. The molding looks good. The gap looks pretty good. But what's most important is that the rocker, because that's what we're working on. What does the gap here look like? And what does it look like? Well, looks like it's tight on that end, not too tight, actually a pretty good gap there, and then a little loose down here. So what I'm thinking is that I'm probably going to have to cut this back loose at the weld. The straight lines on these trucks is what draws your peepers in, and if you care what the truck looks like, you need to make sure that the body lines are, are straight on them because these trucks are full of straight lines. And if that's crooked, there's nothing you can do about it if you weld it in. It's done and you're just going to have to live with it. I've seen a bunch of them. So that's why we fit the door first and we're checking it. And I'm going to have to cut this one back loose. That's what it looks like. Cut it back loose, remove just a couple layers of cutoff wheel with lines from the top where they butt up to the where it mates up and then do this all over again. So I got to looking at this rocker a little closer and the problem is that it's not too low on this side, that it's twisted just ever so slightly. So what I did, hopefully you're still uh, in the shot there, is I left the weld, the little tack weld that I had in the back here and then ran a cutoff wheel down this joint and then just slightly twisted it out a little bit and then checked my Checked my joint again there, right to the first knuckle, right to the first knuckle, a little bit tighter, and almost to the first knuckle. So it still is just a hair loose on this end, but looking down that body line, it looks really good. And I don't want to raise this up any farther because it's going to start interfering with the bottom of the cab corner where it should be. So that, my friend, is good enough. So it's 39 degrees outside the shop this morning, 52 inside the shop. A little breezy out there, but nice. And it's absolute chaos out there. Not the weekend you'd want to go walking around with a fur coat on in the woods. It's white-tailed deer gun season. Pretty intense out there, actually. I missed you, little Joe. What are you doing? Hmm? You want to help me get this bumper off? No? Still 
bolt in there? There it is. There we go. Oops, see, she wasn't even hooked up. So here's something kind of funny and I catch myself doing this subconsciously all the time and that is avoiding the job that I'm supposed to be doing by doing other work that technically needs done but in the back of my mind I know that I'm doing that work to avoid the job that I'm supposed to be doing and that is getting the bed off this truck because I know I'm going to crawl up under there. I'm going to get a face full of rust and dirt and oil and I'm avoiding it by doing other work and I catch myself. Man, just crawl up under there and get it done. I've always hated removing the beds off of pickups. Tail light's broken. I need to get me a set of lenses. They look so much nicer when they got new, nice, bright, shiny lenses. This has got the chrome, where it's the Silverado. It's got all the chrome around all the little doodads. It's actually stainless. I could probably peel that off and put that on some new ones. Maybe not. I don't know. What I would do. Oh, come on. What I would like to do is go all LED lights with this truck. They're just nicer. They just last longer. They're better. Right? Eh, yeah, see, this one's a little more rusted. What is that? Oh, that's part of that socket. I for sure I'm gonna need some. No wonder the tail light didn't work on this thing for years. So when I was cleaning this truck out behind the seat, I found a brand new set of used spark plugs that I'd put in here in order to keep it running on the number one cylinder, which constantly fouls a spark plug maybe you know once every couple hundred miles. So I kept these in there so this thing didn't run like garbage all the time. I'm not sure what the problem is. Maybe valve seals, maybe rings, maybe both. Probably both. So, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But Yeah, probably not the first to keep spark plugs behind their seat. So also behind the seat of this truck, I kept a brand new used alternator belt. One that is so thin that you'd be lucky to get home with it, but that was kind of the idea. Because this thing wore out alternator belts so quickly, I always had to keep one behind the seat. Why? Maybe it's because the pulleys are so pitted. Maybe it's because the alternator or the water pumps wore out of this thing. Who knows? Maybe all of that. But it was pretty common for this thing to break an alternator belt and for me to be walking if I didn't keep one behind the seat. So I did. Outside, your fur is all wet. Oh. 
Ugh. So I got the front carriage bolts, or actually that's the back carriage bolts out of this truck, and now I gotta remove these four. This one should be pretty easy. See, and as it's almost rotted in two, but that's a long one, and I'll have to buy a set of these, I'm sure. Let's throw that one down there and see if we can get these others out. Hold your ears, because I'm gonna hammer on them a bit. Oh, see, that one's no good. Huh, that one can be used. Huh, that one's good too. Got lucky. So unless I can just magically find another tailgate, I'm going to be using this one. This chrome, or it's actually stainless, uh, is not in horrible shape. I can roll out a lot of these dents and reuse it because we're not going after perfect here, um, and straighten it up a bit. And the tailgate itself, I mean, it's usable. Not completely rotted out. And it's, what was that? And it's already got the dent hider on it, because they always get beat up along the top. And the seam's not too bad. Even the bed in the back is not rusted out along the very back, which is rare. So, you know, there's good points and there's bad points. first time in forever this bed's been off seemed like everything was where it was supposed to be fitting wise or fastener wise so maybe this thing had never been off there we go scooted back anyway I'm not gonna be able to get it off by myself but I can continue with the cap corners though So the excitement continues to build. This is really exciting for me. Hopefully you can tell. A viewer sent me this grill. Really nice, I appreciate that. The old one is quite cracked and busted in several spots. And uh, you know, it's just falling apart after 35 years. So this will look really nice. Some new dental work for the truck. I also need your guys' opinion, if you can. I'm no expert on headlights. And to be honest, probably not an expert on anything, but definitely not headlights. And these old sealed beam, head, sealed beam headlights, uh, they're not very bright. They're not very bright, and I priced them because I was going to just go ahead and throw in four new headlights, and I was shocked. Is it just me, or they've always been that high? This one's got water in it and algae. Um, so I'm not for sure. What would you do? Leave it down in the comments. What would you do for the headlights for this truck if it was yours? Curious. Need your suggestions. So you guys and gals who've watched the channel for any amount of time have probably picked up on the fact that I'm a super cheapskate and will fix almost anything that uh, has a possibility to be fixed in an attempt to save a dime, but I did splurge a bit, just a little bit, on a set of new Tongyang fenders. They're made in Taiwan for the old pickup truck. I was really shocked, actually at the price and at the quality of these things. Um, I was expecting to get these in beat from one end to the other because that's my experience uh, buying aftermarket panels, but I was surprised to find that these are slick as a baby's bottom. Really nice, both of them. Nice heavy sheet metal, look really good. Save me two days plus of labor and tons of curse words, I'm sure. Although it did make my wallet a bit flimsy. You know, I'll take this route over fixing old crusty fender. Just makes more sense, I think. Nice. So one thing about these old square body four wheel drive trucks is that you really had to watch the steering box on them where they bolt to the frame because they would break. And luckily this one's broken as well because they all did. It's also broken back here. Someone's tried to weld it up, but it wasn't me. 
So we're going to have to fix that while we're in here. Then you can imagine that once you put some big tires on these things, you jack them up, you get them bound up in a mud hole with some rocks, and you try to turn the steering wheel, it puts a lot of torque on that frame, which is, you know, not all that thick. And eventually, you know, it stresses the metal and they break. So that's what's happened to this one. So we're going to have to fix that as well. Luckily, we have good access right now. So I'll have to pick up the patch panels. They haven't got them, but I will. I'm going to try to. They are contoured. They sell them because this is such a common issue to fit the frame. So you just weld them in. Line them up, weld them in, and then you've got a, you know, patch on the uh, steering box. Um, we left the inner cab corner in there, what's left of it anyway, just because I want to see where it's at exactly. You don't want to just chop out everything at one time. We kind of got to slowly creep our way through this because it's been 20 years since I've done one of these. But this is a spot weld drill bit. You probably can't see it from there, but I'll get you a better shot of it. Anyway, they're great for removing spot welds from material without damaging the piece of metal behind whatever you're trying to remove. So great little tool. You can get them cheap. I bought this off eBay, I think. Like maybe 10 bucks for a big, huge pack of them. So there you go. Now here's our cab corner, our replacement. And don't be too concerned if you're doing this and your parts don't fit. That's technically your job as a body person, unfortunately. They just make these really close. As close as they can, right? So our... Uh, our radius here is not quite on, but luckily we're not going to use the whole thing. We're going to be cutting her out probably about where I've got it here. Maybe a little higher, but that's probably where it's going to end up. And uh, it's up to you to bend on them and tweak them till they fit. So that's what they send you as an inner cab corner. It's just the support at the bottom of the rocker here at the corner and the and the cab where it comes down and it keeps mud from packing up into the cab corner which really I don't know how well it does because they rotted out where these were welded to the cab corners but you get the idea we're going to put it back in anyway and all I've done is I didn't cut out the whole thing I just cut it out where it stopped being bad and then that's it we'll zap that in not permanently zap it in but just zap it in there until we decide if it's for sure where we want it, and then we'll come back and really you know, put the beans to it.
So I'm getting it, so I'm getting it fit pretty good. The problem is that this panel just does not fit the contour of the original cab corner all that well. You know, and don't be surprised if uh, you do something similar to basically any body panel and it not fit as well. That's just the way it goes. You just do the best you can. My main concern is this face here. I want it to fit well because that's the one you see the most. That's really the only one you see. And I want my body line down the door gap to be good as well. And so I'm worried about this and this. Now this, man, the wind is kicking out there. The back of the bed here, or back of the cab is covered by the bed, so you really don't even see that. And from the factory, they didn't do good body work back here because they didn't care. The problem is that this cab corner is a little large and uh, this radius needs to be a little tighter and it needs to pull back. So we'll see. I'll fit it as best I can and we'll roll with it because really it doesn't matter. But it does. So I'd have to say I'm pretty pleased with the way that I got that corner rounded there. And by the time this is welded, ground down, then hammered low, right, we'll have a dip here that'll get filled with body filler and this will be a smooth transition from one panel, from the new panel to the old panel. But just to show you how poorly this, this panel fit, I was kind of surprised at how big it was. You can see the original, it should, this seam here should tie in evenly to this seam but it doesn't. This was probably more designed to cap over instead of butt up to cap over, and that would have took out a lot of the difference there. But, I mean, you get the idea. We'll just take a cutoff wheel and zip that in, make it look like it's supposed to be like that, and no one will know the difference. The bed's here anyway, so you can't see it. If I want a mistake or something that looks out of the, out of the ordinary, I want it to be back here. So I'm glad that this turned out all right. So now all that's left for this side is to finish welding it out, and I'm very, very happy with the way that it's turned out. Now, if this was a show car, I would have spent more time and got it, you know, better, because it could be better, but it's not bad. If you look at the lines here, they're good. Lines here are good. You know, down the door, I mean, as good as it's going to get. You know, so there you go. Probably once it's painted, you won't be able to tell. And if you can, it doesn't matter. So there we go. I'll finish welding it out. And this side is done. Other than the seam sealing and all that other stuff. Well, needless to say, I'm extremely excited about this project. I've been wanting a truck for the longest time. I didn't know that I necessarily wanted this truck. But after I've got started on it, I'm really digging, you know, fixing the old pickup truck. 
there's something about bringing something back from the dead that I've always liked. And this truck was about as close to dead as one gets before, you know, it gets the old crusher put on it. So we got the floors finished on this side, which I didn't show. We got the uh, rockers finished. They turned out really good, better than I expected. Got the cab corner, got it all buttoned up. Haven't done the finishing body work. We even put in the inner cab corner, which a lot of people don't even go through that extra trouble. So I think I've really done, you know, the passenger side of this truck justice, and it's as good as you can expect for a, you know, a truck of this caliber anyway, and it'll be nice when it's done. So leave me some suggestions because I'm kind of up in the air on what colors to paint this truck. You know, I was considering going back the same two-tone that it is, but then again, you know, I'm, I'm up for a, for a primer with a clear coat on it to give it maybe that uh, resto mod look. I think it'd be fitting. What do you think? You know, leave me your thoughts. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do that as well. Help a guy out because I would really appreciate that. And uh, that's it, I think. Got a lot done on the driver's side that I didn't show you, but I will uh, before it goes back together because it's a lot rougher than the uh, passenger side. So a lot of the same, that's why I haven't showed it, but I will before it goes back together. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever. I appreciate it. And that's it. I'll see you next time. <laughs>